Hi, welcome back to the lecture series on abstract major theory. In the previous lecture, uh, uh, we have completed only two steps uh, of the theorem. Now, in this lecture, uh, I will do the remaining three steps of the theorem. In step one, uh, uh, we have assumed that E is a member of semi-ring S tensor sigma, and in the steps and in step second, we have assumed that E is a sigma set in S tensor sigma. So now in third step, uh, in step third, we assume that uh, E is E is a countable intersection of a sigma sets. E E is a countable is a countable intersection of is a countable intersection of sigma sets is a countable intersection of sigma sets of finite major of of finite major Now uh, this uh, uh, so let uh, let let E be equal to this set E be equal to say it's the intersection of sigma sets countable intersection so it's equal to F1 intersection F2 intersection this where where Fn is a sigma set is a is a sigma set in this semi ring in S tensor this uh, sigma so let's define the following sets let uh, let e1 is equal to f1 e2 is equal to f1 intersection f2 and in general let's define e n is equal to is equal to f1 intersection f2 intersection up to fn then en then en is a sigma set is a sigma set for each n you can easily verify it uh, for because the intersection of finite intersection of sigma sets are countable intersection of sigma sets not uh, the finite intersection of sigma sets is again a sigma set okay then then the en is sigma set for each n and not only this this e is which is equal to intersection of fn actually and runs from 1 to infinity it is same as the intersection of e n is and runs from 1 to infinity so now this e n is they are sigma sets with this property e n is subset of and this uh, e uh, n plus 1 is subset of e n okay because e n plus 1 is the intersection of n plus 1 sets and e n is the intersection of n sets so thus E can be expressed as the countable intersection of sigma sets. These ENs are sigma sets such that these ENs they are decreasing sets. They are EN plus 1 is subset of E and it's a decreasing sequence now. Okay. Uh, now let's define as uh, soon as uh, uh, the result is true for sigma sets. So for each N let's define for each N we define a uh, gn of x which is equal to zero if new star of en of x is equal to infinity en x equal to infinity and its value is new star of Enx. If uh, new star of Enx is finite, since we know that uh, f uh, since this En is a sigma set, therefore new uh, therefore Enx a new star of Enx defined as an uh, integrable function, and it is also measurable. Uh, this Enx is also measurable for each n. So uh, this gn is also integrable because gn is zero if it's infinite and it's equal to 
this if it's finite okay so therefore uh, by step second g is integral function over x by step second gn of x is an integrable function is an integrable function is an integrable function over x over x such that it is integral is equal to the measure of the set such that integral g and d mu which is equal to over x which is equal to integral over x so what is g and it is equal to new star of e and x d mu and that is equal to by step second it is equal to mu cross new star of e n okay this is true for each n greater or equal to 1 <coughs> okay this holds by step second Now actually uh, we have to show that ex is uh, uh, measurable, it is new measurable and uh, new star of ex defines an integral function over x. We have, uh, we have to prove the result for, uh, for the set e actually. Now what is ex actually? Now ex, because e is the intersection of en, so ex must be the intersection of en x. And runs from 1 to infinity en x. So therefore, ex is measurable because each enx is measurable ex is measurable as by step second by step second each enx is measurable is measurable <coughs> okay so ex is a it's a it's it's new new measure okay because it is subset of y they are all subsets of y here. Uh, they are the x section is actually. So also since uh, the major outer major of e one x is finite uh, because uh, it's uh, uh, finite, uh, so also since. Uh, Also, since uh, this one, uh, new star of E one x, new star of E one x is finite. It is finite. Uh, this finiteness it holds for hold for mu almost all x mu almost all x. So you oh, verify this how it is finite okay this is finite okay this is finite so uh, by uh, one of our theorem which we had done in the first course of major theory so it's uh, it's by theorem you can see it on l prints uh, by theorem that uh, this we have done in our first course of major theory 15.4 of l prints uh, L prints, uh, CD L prints. You can see that theorem uh, 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 15.4. This G and X, G and X, which is equal to new star of E and X, it will decrease to new star of E X because E N decreases to E actually. So e and x will decrease to ex, so which means that new star of e and x will decrease to new new star of ex. This hold holds for holds for mu almost all x. Okay. So uh, this. Uh, because now it's the limit of integrable function is new star of ex, uh, so this defines an integrable function. So thus, uh, thus new star of because it's a decreasing so you can so so its limit uh, must be because each year is integrable so limit must be integrable as uh, 
you can see this new star of e and x uh, its limit will be finite okay because it's a decreasing limit uh, so new star of uh, uh, new star this uh, new, uh, uh, thus uh, this uh, the function which maps x on to the function which maps x on to new star of ex defines an integrable function define as an integrable function define as an integrable function uh, and uh, and what will be its integral uh, now its integral over x of the function new star of ex d mu which is equal to the limit uh, limit of the integral is equal to integral of the limit so it will be it's the integral of limit which is called a limit of integral so but this one it's a limit of new star of new star of e n x d mu okay and that is equal to mu cross new star of uh, e n that's equal to limit and approach to infinity mu cross new star of e n and that limit as soon as e n decreases to e it's equal to mu cross new star of e Okay, uh, so uh, this is a uh, this limit is actually equal to new star of x. Uh, so uh, it's by theorem fifteen point four, which I have already told you. Uh, this is uh, because of the theorem fifteen point four that you can see from elephants. Okay, so next uh, this all holds uh, these equalities. This uh, this equality, this one, it is also because of the theorem. Uh, this is by theorem 15.4. Okay, this limit is equal to this. Uh, it's very simple because you have done it in if uh, if given a sequence of measurable sets e n which decreases to e, then mu star of e n decreases to mu star of e, provided that measure of uh, e one is finite. Okay, that is already done. So in uh, therefore uh, this uh, uh, in this case theorem holds in step third. If if, if the set E is the countable intersection of sigma sets, then result holds. Now uh, we have step fourth of the theorem. Uh, step fourth. In this step, we assume that E is a null set. So null set means a uh, agar uska major zero hoga. So assume that. Assume that uh, this set E is a null set. Is a null set that is null set means that is mu cross new star of E is equal to zero. Now uh, uh, you can see the proof of the theory fifteen point eleven. Uh, that's again done in the first course of major theory. So by by the proof uh, as the proof of the theorem as in in the proof of the theorem of the theorem, uh, it's uh, fifteen point one one. As in the proof of this theorem, uh, you can see that uh, we can find a measurable set. So there exists a measurable set there exists a measurable set g which is countable intersection of sigma sets which is countable intersection of 
sigma sets which is countable intersection of sigma sets of finite measure of each of the set has finite measure countable intersection of sigma sets of finite measure of finite measure such that this e it is subset of g and uh, and uh, and this measure of g is also equal to zero measure of g is same as measure of e is measure of e is equal to zero measure of g is also zero this is true for any set in fact uh, not for uh, not only for the sets of major zero this is true for any set in particular it's true for the set e of major zero okay uh, so g is a countable intersection of sigma sets so by step third result holds for g by step third by step third uh, by step third integral over x uh, of gx uh, new star of gx integral function by step third and its integral is equal to mu cross nu star of g that's equal to zero so it's equal to zero so by theorem so if the integral is zero by theorem by theorem uh, 22.7 the first part of this theorem uh, of on on the same book uh, this uh, theorem is from the same book elephants cd elephants okay so this uh, by that theorem uh, if the integral of a non negative function is zero then the function must be equal to zero almost everywhere so this function is zero holds this function zero it's equal to zero which is uh, which hold for mu almost for mu almost all x okay now uh, since e subset of this so ex is subset of gx because e subset of g e subset of g for all x for all x okay so new star of ex must be subset of new star of gx which implies so new star of ex is lesser equal to new star of gx so new star of ex is lesser equal to new star of gx for all x but this one it's equal to zero for new almost all x which means that new star of because it cannot be negative it's a major it's equal to zero this hold this hold for mu almost all x so which implies that this function is integrable so this e means that uh, new star of so this uh, its major is zero almost everywhere uh, so this function uh, this set is this means that ex is if it is zero almost everywhere if it's uh, for mu almost everywhere so ex is uh, a new major new major for mu almost all x okay it's equal to zero almost everywhere so major of set is zero almost everywhere for mu almost all x so for those x's it must be equal to new measure where its major is equal to zero because it's a null set major of the null set is zero but it's not true for each x it's a true for the mu almost all x so for those x's where its major is equal to zero for those x's it must be equal to measurable so that's why i have written here e x is new measurable for mu almost all x for such x's where this equal to zero but this new star of ex equal to zero and not only this it's also integrable new star of ex is integrable in fact and and the function which maps x onto new star of ex is is integrable is integrable thus uh, because it's a zero function Let's uh, let's find this integral over x of new star of e x d mu x. It's equal to zero. 
which is equal to because it's a zero function new cross new star of e so therefore the result of, uh, holds in this case also now uh, we have a last step that's the general step step fifth so first four steps are the particular steps now in the last step we choose we assume that uh, is is uh, this is the general step okay general case i can see it's a general case so e is a set of finite major here now is a major set of finite major so e is a fi uh, e, e, but, uh, in the statement uh, that uh, was, uh, e is mu cross new major satisfying that so assume that uh, e is assume that is mu cross nu measurable and its major is finite so this is our general case actually this is the case uh, which uh, we have to discuss now uh, so in this case uh, our set is uh, measurable and its major is finite now uh, as in the stuff uh, third uh, uh, as in the stuff uh, fourth so uh, in the in the step fourth uh, we have assumed that is a null set then uh, we have written there that we can find a set g which is commutable in intersection of sigma sets such that the majors are equal so again uh, this is because that result is true for any measurable set therefore in particular uh, the, this result is true for that result is true for this particular set e which is a measurable set of finite major so we can find choose 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 a mu cross new choose a mu cross new measurable choose choose a choose a mu cross new measurable set f say that this f is countable intersection of sigma sets say that say that f is a countable countable intersection of sigma sets f is a countable intersection of sigma sets uh, it's again uh, by third of 15.11 okay f is a countable intersection of sigma sets such that such that our e is subset of f but their measures are same that's very important and and uh, mu cross new star of f is same as mu cross new star of e so this is so very important their major results okay so let's define now set let's construct now set let's define the set g which is equal to f minus e so the major is finite here so this means that uh, mu cross new star of g which is equal to mu cross new star of g minus f this is equal to mu cross new star of g because the major is finite here it's equal to sorry it's f here not g it's it's here f okay uh, it's uh, f minus e okay f minus e f minus e which is equal to mu cross new star of f minus mu cross new star of e and that's equal to zero because they are same mu cross new star of f is same as mu cross new star of e so it's equal to zero that means g is a null set so which implies that g is a null set g is a null set so this implies gx is measurable and uh, a new star of gx and uh, this new star of gx equal to zero for mu almost all x this is a uh, by step four by step four okay this is by step four. 
so uh, <coughs> this one uh, uh, we have we have gx is equal to fx minus ex f is a countable intersection of sigma series so fx is new measurable gx is new measurable because g is, uh, g is here gx is new measurable it's new measurable okay fx is new measurable so this implies uh, ex is new measurable ex is uh, you can easily verify it ex is new measurable as gx and fx are new measurable so you verify this how it's measurable okay how it's new measurable using the fact that both fx and gx are new measurable you can see that this ex is also new measurable so <laughs> this uh, ex is new measurable and uh, and uh, and its major new star of ex which is equal to new star of new star of uh, fx so first uh, i will this a uh, new star of uh, new star of gx which is equal to new star of uh, to g g is equal to f minus new star of fx minus new star of uh, ex uh, they are uh, equal actually uh, for uh, mu almost all x is uh, so this is equal to zero because this one this one it's equal to zero for mu almost all x so which implies that uh, new star of fx because g is a null set new star of fx is equal to new star of ex for mu almost all x okay so they are equal for mu almost all x so again uh, by term uh, by step third because f is a countable intersection of sigma sets by step third the function which maps x onto new star of fx is uh, it's an integral function is an integral function is an integrable function why because uh, because uh, because 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 f is countable intersection f is countable intersection of sigma sets okay f is countable intersection of sigma sets so this is an integral function so which maps but uh, they are same you almost all everywhere so therefore uh, therefore the function therefore therefore the function which maps x on new star of ex because it's equal to almost every it's equal to new star of fx which is an integral function defines an integral function this function defines an integrable function and uh, and integrals are same actually and uh, and uh, we we'll started with this new cross new star of e it's same as a uh, new cross new star of x and that's equal to in the integral integral over x because result is true for f new star of fx which is same as integral over x of new star of ex So hence the theorem, hence the theorem, hence the, the proof of the theorem is complete. The proof of the theorem is complete.
hence the proof of the theorem is complete <coughs> Okay, so uh, now uh, next uh, we define, uh, we, we, we try to define the iterator integrals, uh, then uh, we do the Fubini's theorem on that uh, topic, uh, iterator integrals. So first uh, we define functions actually, uh, we define the function as an x section, x section and y section function is uh, for any uh, two sets for any two sets x and y so uh, let let x and y be two non empty sets uh, so suppose they are also major species so x y they are major species here uh, so but in this uh, definition we don't need uh, those sets are major spaces actually uh, so uh, let uh, let's 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 take this function let f be a function from x cross y to r so we try to uh, construct a function from this function we try to construct a function from x to r and a function from y to r okay be a function be a function then for each x then for each x belongs to x we have a following symbol the symbol the symbol fx will denote the function will denote the function this fx it's a function from y to r why this x is fixed here it's a function from y to r defined by defined by fx of y equal to f of x comma y where this y is in y and in a similar way similarly similarly for each y belongs to y we define fy from x to r by fy of x equal to f of x comma y where x belongs to x okay so let's uh, take this example here say uh, this f is a function from say r cross r to r suppose defined by f of x comma y suppose it's equal to x square plus x y it's a real valid function now for each x uh, say let's take this x choose say say x equal to 5 we define the following function f 5 from y y mean is equal to r okay here r to r by f 5 of y equal to f of 5y and that's equal to what's the definition of the function f of xy yeah oh, what's the definition it's equal to x square plus xy okay x square plus xy x square means 5 square plus 5y so that's equal to 25 plus 5y so this is the function Similarly, we can choose say y equal to 7. We define f for 7 of x. So it's a function from r to r now here. From y to r because our y is equal to r. Okay, let's uh, uh, now we have following definition is uh, so definition. So now uh, this x and y they are major spaces fixed in major spaces so let uh, let f be a function from x cross y to r be a function this is a function then uh, the iterator integral 
then the iterator integral then the iterator integral iterator integral uh, this one f d mu d nu you are integrating first with respect to x then with respect to y d mu dy is said to exist is said to exist if it first since uh, you are integrating function first with respect to x so first this fy is a function of x which is a function from x to r this should be an integral function is an integral function is an then only you can integrate it with respect to x because f is a function of x here f is a function from x to r over x over over x for new almost always okay and the second property is uh, now uh, next we have the following function the function because now uh, after integrating with respect to x we have a function of y here the function g of y which is equal to the integration of this function uh, with respect to x first uh, that function after integrating it with respect to x uh, f y after integrating f y with respect to x so it will be come the it, it will become the function of y uh, this is same as the integral f y same as f of x y d so you integrate this function with respect to x and keeping y fixed and you will get the function of y only g y then you integrate this function g y with respect to y with respect to the new major if this function with respect to new is integrable then we say this integral exists okay so this should define define is an define is an integral function or y define is an integrable function over y Uh, the value of the iterator integral the value of the iterator integral the value of the iterator integral this one double integral f d mu d nu is computed is is computed is evaluated by starting the by starting with innermost integration okay by starting with by starting with the with the with the innermost with the innermost with the innermost integration with the innermost integration and by continuing uh, and by continuing uh, and by continuing and by continuing okay and uh, by continuing with the second with the second with the to agar aapko integral calculate karna hoga you will first integrate with respect to the inner integration that's with respect to mu then you do this uh, integration with respect to the variable with respect to second major space okay so and it's computed uh, with with the second as follows as as follows so this is the integral f d mu f d nu it's equal to it's equal to this is over y and you first integrate over x space f t mu then you integrate this function now with respect to y that's d mu
so now uh, we have the second iterative integral which is uh, the meaning of the second integral uh, second iterative integral is uh, the analogs to this one uh, the meaning of the iterator integral iterator integral the meaning of the iterator integral this one integral of the function f uh, f but first uh, with respect to major space uh, y and then with respect to x this is uh, the analogs of the previous one. is is uh, analogs uh, of the first one okay so that is if you want to evaluate it that is uh, the integral f d nu d mu it's equal to x okay this is first with respect to y f d nu and t nu okay yeah now uh, we try to find the uh, integral of the step function uh, not the step but the characteristic function if e is if e is mu cross nu measurable is mu cross nu measurable if it's mu cross nu measurable subset of x cross y subset of x cross y with its major finite with major finite then then uh, it's uh, then uh, then by theorem then by theorem uh, 26.4 then by theorem 26.4 then the previous theorem okay that we have done uh, in five steps then by theorem 26.4 then by theorem both the iterative integrals both the iterator integrals uh, both the iterative integrals uh, of this characteristic function okay d mu d nu and this d nu d mu exist and are equal and are equal to mu cross nu star of e so you verify this one okay they are equal to mu cross nu star of t. Okay, so actually, yeah, uh, you need to see that this. Uh, uh, if you integrate first chi e of x, which uh, you see that this is the measure of nu star of, this will be the nu star of e x actually, nu star of uh, e by sorry. The if you integrate first with respect to mu measure, this integral will be nu star of e by and uh, mu, st uh, mu star of uh, mu star of u okay and the integral of mu star of u it is called a mu cross nu star of p e. and here if you integrate first with respect to the major space y you will see this is nu star of ex this integral is equal to nu star of ex and integral of nu star of ex with respect to the major mu it's equal to mu cross nu by, by theorem 26.4 that we are done because you can see that nu star of ex is a uh, is integrable function for uh, new almost all x's and and this integral this integral of uh, chi of e with respect to this major is equal to new star e x okay so this you uh, verify so uh, thus we have seen that uh, if e is a major if e is a measurable set of x cross y with finite measure then uh, this whole is uh, integral chi of e d mu d nu it's equal to double integral 
characteristic function of e d nu d mu it's equal to mu cross nu star of e okay, this is a uh, here finite if e is major we'll set with finite major both the integrals are equal and they are equal to the mu major of the set e major of the set e so therefore the result also holds for stiff function if if if, if, if we replace this characteristic function by a stiff function uh, uh, the result also holds these they are equal these two integrals are equal since uh, since uh, every stiff function every mu cross nu stiff function in this major space every stiff function is a finite linear combination of or just a linear combination linear combination means finite is a linear is a linear combination of characteristic functions is a linear combination of characteristic function of mu cross mu major rule sets of mu cross nu measurable sets of finite major right stuff function in stuff function we have those sets must have finite major of finite in case of simple function they need not be of, of finite major but in case of stuff function those sets must be of finite major of finite major so it follows that uh, so that means uh, that is uh, we have <coughs> that is this stuff function it is equal to summation i runs from 1 to n <coughs> okay ai into characteristic function of ei where mu cross nu star of ei is finite okay okay so then uh, then these it 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 integral of phi with respect to first with respect to mu then with respect to nu it's same as this it integral phi first with respect to nu then with respect to mu they are same because you have to apply this here integration uh, you have to apply the definition of the integral of a stuff function and for these characteristic functions they are equal so you can see for stuff function they are also equal so you just verify this one so thus you have seen that uh, the iterative integrals are equal for stuff function and for the characteristic functions but in general they may not be equal they may not be equal thus iterative integrals are equal thus thus iterated integrals are equal for step functions for for step functions for step functions but in general they are not equal for in general they are not equal but but uh, but in general they are not they are not equal but in general they are not equal so they are equal for mu cross nu integral that's that that's a fubini's theorem actually so what's the statement of fubini's theorem when the iterative integrals are equal it's the, it's it is the fubini theorem which gives uh, us the condition uh, under which uh, these iterative integrals are equal so what is that condition let f be a function from x cross y to r be integrable with respect to mu cross nu major okay be mu cross nu integrable like this stuff function they are mu cross nu integrable characteristic functions they are mu cross nu integrable functions then then both then both the iterator integrals iterator integrals iterator integrals 
integrals exist then both the iterative integrals exist and are equal and are equal to the integral of the function f with respect to this major product major mu cross nu so that is so we have here three integrals actually two are iterative integrals and one is the product integral you can see So they are the iterative integral and they must be equal to the integral of f with respect to the product space, okay? Since f is integrable with respect to mu cross nu major, therefore this integral exists. And so in case this integral exists, then both the integrals must exist and they must be equal. That, that, that's actually Fubini's theorem. And that we'll do in the next lecture, uh, Fubini's theorem, and uh, we also the converse of the Fubini's theorem that we call the Tonali's theorem. That also we will do in the next theorem. But uh, we'll see that uh, uh, the uh, uh, there are there are the cases where these iterative integrals are equal, but the functions the, but the function need not be integrable. Both exist. Like uh, we can define a function here uh, where the where both the iterative integrals exist. So you define this function f from r cross r not from r cross r. It's the interval zero one. From you define the function from x cross y to r where here x is equal to y is equal to the integral interval 0 1 okay you define this function by f of x y is equal to x square minus y square divided by x square plus y square whole square if uh, they are not equal to 0 if both the numbers are not equal to 0 if if either one of them is not equal to 0, sorry, if x, y is not equal to 0, comma 0, at, it, at least one of them is not equal to 0. If, uh, if both are equal to 0, its value is 0. So here f of 0, 0 is equal to 0. Then you verify that uh, because since you had done the, this uh, double integration uh, with respect to the Lebesgue major, it is very simple. You can see with respect to the ordinary integration that you are doing, that you have already done. You can see this integral of f d mu d nu it's equal to minus pi by 4 an integral of f with respect to d nu d mu it's equal to plus pi by 4. That uh, you can easily verify. Uh, and here, uh, here mu is equal to nu is equal to lambda both are the Lebesgue majors here okay so both are Lebesgue majors here and you will see this uh, these integrals uh, this one integral is equal to, if you first integrate with respect to x then y you will get minus pi by 4 but if you integrate first with respect to y then with respect to x you will see it's equal to pi by 4 so therefore you can see the function f is not is is not mu cross nu integrable because for if it's mu cross nu integrable, then by Fubini's theorem, these integrals must be equal. So this is an example of a function which is not mu cross nu integrable. Okay. So in the next theorem, we'll prove these two theorems. One is the Fubini's theorem and second is the Tonali theorem. This Tonali theorem is just the converse of the Fubini theorem. Okay. So that you will uh, we'll do in the next.